MPs returned to Ottawa on Monday for the first sitting of the House of Commons in its new home in West Block. And to prepare, the Conservative caucus was meeting there today. Party's deputy leader, Lisa Raid, joins me now. Uh, Lisa, before we get into the caucus meeting, yeah. I, I want to get your reaction to the top story today here, these uh, terror-related arrests mm -hmm. uh, in Kingston, Ontario. What do you think? Really concerning. I'm uh, very glad that the RCMP, on a tip from the FBI, did what they did, took care of the matter so that we don't have to be worried about anything with regard to this incident. But it's very concerning. I'm sure that a lot of Canadians are, are worrying about um, having terrorists in our midst. Mm -hmm. uh, this week, the Prime Minister came out and said he, he was warning uh, about fear-mongering in the mm -hmm. upcoming election campaign. He says he doesn't want refugees and immigration to be a hot button issue, yeah. but we're learning today a little bit more about one of the, the people who, who was arrested uh, last night in Kingston, that his uh, family were Syrian refugees who came here. Does this change the conversation, these arrests mm. uh, about the refugees and Trudeau's support for bringing in so many refugees yeah. uh, after, after he formed government? I think the major concern that Canadians have, and Canadians are talking about this, is the speed by which uh, refugees were approved to come into the country because we now know that CBSA didn't have a great audit a number of years ago mm -hmm. in terms of making sure everything was secure. We had an incident last week about somebody was granted permanent residency status even though he was a national security concern. The minister was naturally outraged and should have been. But I think what Canadians are worried about is the fact that the border isn't secure. When you're walking across the border to claim refugee status mm -hmm. from a safe country, the United States, mm -hmm. um, I think Canadians wonder, you know, what's really going on there? I wouldn't say it's an immigration question. I really think it's a security issue, and Canadians are expressing their concern. We're a rules-based country. You've been mm -hmm. hearing that a lot this mm -hmm. week. That, that applies as well to the actual border. So they want to know that what's happening there is fair, and that when we are doing our process, that we are secure and that it's, um, it's appropriate in, in the way in which it's being done. So those conversations are going ha to continue to happen. And Mr. Trudeau shouldn't try to characterize it as black and white because the reality is all Canadians are talking about this and he yeah. can't afford I think, I think to say there, there, everybody is... There is a distinction, though, between people who are crossing the border in Quebec and Manitoba just walking across to mm -hmm. uh, the person who may have been involved in this case, who was a sponsored refugee and presumably Absolutely. went through Absolutely. Uh, more, more screening. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. and that's the whole point. So we're not... When he tries to say that we're talking about immigration, we are talking about what's happening at the border. We do believe that in the cases where we are dealing with a huge influx of refugees, you know, in the appropriate channels mm. that we do have the right security checks and that they're doing it appropriately um, but finally and most importantly fair ordered secure um, reliable that kind of immigration Canadians embrace they right. want it so do we okay so let's, let's talk about your caucus meeting uh, yeah. today uh, you're looking ahead towards Monday historic day going into the, the new chamber yep. uh, first question period yeah it, your leader gets up a chance gets a chance to ask the first question in yep. that chamber he What's does. it going to be? Uh, probably on the economy, depending upon what happens this yeah. weekend, to be honest. It's been a lot of news this week, as right, you guys sure, are yeah. aware. But uh, I would say that, you know, what we've heard this past six weeks in our ridings yeah. is really about an anxiety that our constituents are having about the economy coming up this year. Mm -hmm. um, when the Prime Minister and the Minister of Finance tell Canadians that everything's doing great in the economy, they're not buying it. People feel that they don't have enough money to buy the things that they want because everything's going to the things that they need mm -hmm. and they're getting squeezed. So we're going to talk about how higher taxes aren't helping Canadians and how we want to make sure that we're growing the economy and providing opportunity and that the carbon tax isn't the way to go. So it'll be more of the same from last year, but really rooted in what we've heard from our, our constituents like I did in Milton, Ontario. Yeah, We're months away from the mm -hmm. official start of the election campaign, but let's be honest, we're yeah. into it now, right? You bet. How does your opposition strategy change knowing that you are heading into an election campaign so soon? What, what, what kind of issues are you emphasizing more as an opposition party, knowing that you are going to have to take those yeah. on the road in a few months? So what we have had is the ability to take a look at the last three years of this government, and we have, 
And we thought 2018 was a year of failure for this government, and mm -hmm. that 2019 is the year that Canadians are going to have to pay for the mistakes and the failures mm -hmm. of this government. And we're going to see it in an economic sense, as I said, people really finding life is not as affordable, and that they may think that other people are getting further ahead than they are, because they're not feeling like they're doing as well in the economy that the Prime Minister tells us we should be feeling good about, because they don't feel good. There's a real disconnect. Mm -hmm. I don't think, you know, the Liberal Party and the Prime Minister and the Minister of Finance understand what's really happening on the ground. We're going to communicate that so Canadians know that when they look in October to a choice for their Prime Minister, they're going to pick the person who understands what it's like to try to have an affordable life, not the person who has never had to worry about whether or not they had money coming in to make ends meet at the end of the month. Really quick, in election year, do you want your leader, Andrew Scheer, in the House more, or do you want him out doing these town halls that he's been doing? Uh, you got to market him really quickly. He's still got a fairly low recognition level. What's the challenge there? Uh, we have to do our job that the official opposition does, and that's to hold the government to account. It's a very wonky calendar this year. You'll see parliamentary-wise, we're in and we're out, and that's going to give us the opportunity to get Andrew out to the more remote areas of Canada. He works very hard. He is in Toronto, the Montreal. Those are easy trips to make from Ottawa, yeah. but we're going to take advantage of the calendar and make sure he's out there talking to all Canadians and listening. Town halls really do work. Uh, we do them as, as MPs, and he's going to do more of them, and right. Canadians Canadians are going to see he's a good man who will be a great prime minister. Lisa Wright, thank you for coming in. Thank and you. we'll see you back here on Monday uh, yeah. after visiting our new house. Yeah, it's going to be okay. good.